Hi, this is Eric. I'm one of the ER consultants at the Landspitali at the University of uh, Hospital of Iceland. And I've decided to make a talk about how to use the ventilator that we have in the uh, emergency department. Because after doing some airway training with our staff, we realized that there's really a knowledge gap in our department regarding the ventilator. And since I couldn't find a presentation that would integrate all the elements, I just decided to make one. I guess this talk could have also been called uh, Taming the Beast, because for lots of people, the ventilator is really intimidating, but it should not be. I feel people are feeling that way because they see the vent as something complicated, uh, and it is in a certain way, but we really need to tame it for good, to do good for our patients. And usually what happens is that since people don't know how to use it, they would just bag manually the patient to the CT, to the ICU, uh, to, or to the OR, and I think this is bad for the patient. So hopefully at, at the end of this talk, you'll be able to turn this scary beast into little cute unicorns and you will be uh, able not only to install the right settings, but also to understand what you're doing and you'll be able to push the right buttons if there's any trouble. So there's really a tons of different modes and names, okay? Um, I've pulled like two companies, Traeger and Weinman. Uh, you see these are all the modes on the left side. And on the right side, this is our machine, IPPV, SIPPV, SIMV, PCV, APRV. And this can be really confusing. And there's a reason why we all get confused. It's because it's confusing. They make it confusing for us. Different names, different acronyms, according to like different companies. There's so many modes, so many abbreviation, and the same mode can have different name for different companies. And I think the best way to get out of this maze is by understanding well the basics and then after deciding what you want to achieve and then you will find the right mode for you. So this is why we really have to keep this simple. And to me, this is a contrast to the traditional teaching of the expert telling you everything you th they know and all the modes that exist and then people get confused. And that doesn't work. It doesn't translate to our reality. In the ER, we just want simple stuff, things that are versatile that we can use for a multitude of patients and we really want to ignore the complexities and use the simplicities. Some sort of like 2080 rules. And there may be some purists out there who don't agree with that, but I don't agree with them either uh, because people have felt intimidated by the ventilator for these reasons, and this is wrong. So I really want you to become the expert of your ventilator, the one that you have in your department, and today I'm gonna show you how to use ours. And you need to get familiar with uh, like how to plug it, connect it to oxygen, how to remove it from the rack, and just like these small troubleshooting stuff. Because like I said earlier, we took the bad habit of bagging our patient and this is bad. And I've seen this all across the board, all across the specialties, all across levels, and we're all guilty of it. So if you want to improve the care of our patient, we need to start by putting the patient on the van during transport, wherever it is could be just the CT or the ICU upstairs. To me, the real trigger is when I read the Love ED study. And in short, what they showed is that the decrease mortality of intubated patients by implementing a lung protective strategy in the ER for patients at risk of a ARDS, which is a big proportion of the patient we intubate. And just for the record, they decrease mortality by 15% in absolute number. And to me, this is just absolutely massive. I think this is where we can make a huge difference in our patients, connect them on the ventilator, protect their lung, prevent aspiration, train people. Downstairs, we can make a difference down the road for the patient. So going back to our beast now. It's the Weinman Medjima Transport, really good machine. It's good for transport, air services, pre-hospital. It's made to be on the move. It's perfect for us. It has settings for infants, children, and adults. It's very versatile. And when you open the machine, this is what you get. So on the left side, you have the shortcuts for a different age group. On the middle screen is usually just for like the monitoring, the graphs, the pressure, the flow, and the CO2. The modes are on the, um, to choose the mode, it's on the upper right corner. And there's also different buttons and settings at the bottom, uh, like the PEEP, uh, tidal volume, the PMAX, the frequency. And then you can, on the far right, you, uh, this is where the alarm button is, the menu, and you have a shortcut for the 100% FiO2 and also to adjust the FiO2. 
The real cool thing with our ventilator is that the company have made a simulation software on their website and I'll put the link uh, in the show notes. And once you download it, you can play with it and there's like different like scenarios and buttons for it. So when we turn on the machine, when we're gonna connect the, pa the patient to the ventilator, as per the manufacturer, the first thing you should do is you should do a function check. So even before you connect the intubated patient on the ventilator, you have to do this, but don't worry, it takes less than a minute, it's really simple. And first of all, you need to connect the ventilator on a lung test, which is usually right next to it. And then I'll just put a small movie up about how to do it. But I would say also for someone who has never touched a ventilator, it's usually a good starting point, like kind of like just to know which buttons are where. And it's easy and it's something you can do once a day if you want uh, just to get more familiar with it. All right, let's be clear. This is where I do not consider myself an expert and my goal is just for you to understand the basics. But if you watch this movie, hopefully you will get away with most of the situations. And the two large classes are, are volume control and pressure control. Volume control, you just you choose the tidal volume and uh, respirate and the machine is going to inflate a, a certain volume at a certain rate. So this is the main variable, the volume given. Pressure control is different. You select the pressure you want the machine to reach, then it inflates air until that pressure is reached, then it plateaus for a while, and then it releases. But the first step I want you to do is really to narrow your vision. I want you to narrow it to volume control, okay? Because for us in the ER, this is where the money is, okay? And volume control is to see that air DS network uh, has been selling and where they saw a decrease in mortality and this is what we want so for now just forget about the pressure modes we're just gonna focus on volume control so like I said before we are in the ER we want simple standardized stuff so let's keep the complicated stuff for other specialties for the rest of the time we're gonna talk about volume control and for our machine the three main modes are IPPV SIPPV and SIMV. For other machines, uh, they have other letters like CMV and VCAC. So the best place to start is IPPV. This is ventilation at its simplest. When we turn our, our machine on, this is the default mode, okay? And for other companies, this could also be called CMV for continuous mandatory ventilation. And this is how a pressure graph looks like for um, for IPPV. This is taken from the uh, Weinmann website. It's all in German. Wunderbar. Imagine now IPPV like the simplest ventilator you can have. Like we are in the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. This is just a machine that you tell them what to do and they're going to obey it. So the main settings you adjust are the tidal volume and the respiratory rate. You can also play with the Pmax, the P, the concentration of oxygen, but let's just focus on the tidal volume and the rate. So let's say you enter a 500 milliliter tidal volume and a respiratory rate of 15. The machine is gonna be like a brick wall. It just gives you the tidal volume at a rate that you've selected. If the patient wakes up, start breathing on its own, the machine just ignores it. It just gives a tidal volume at a set rate. So this is okay for paralyzed patient or deeply sedated patients that we don't really expect them to breathe yet, like most of our patients in the ER. Then we move on to SIPPV, which is synchronized intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Just imagine SIPPV like IPPV, but with a bonus. So it's gonna deliver a tidal volume at a set rate like the IPPV. The S stands for synchronize, is that if the patient takes a breath, let's say he's just starting to wake up and takes a breath, the machine is gonna deliver a full tidal volume. So the patient receives a minimum respirate like you've selected, but if the patient triggers an additional breath, it's just gonna deliver a full tidal volume each time the patient triggers it. For other companies, this is also called VCAC. So this is a graph of SIPPV. Um, it might not be evident on this, but it shows that if there's a small negative pressure, like the patient takes a breath, 
then the machine is going to inflate a full tidal volume. And I would say this mode is okay for patients who are for a I would say that this mode is okay for us in the ER because most of the time, like I said, patients are gonna be paralyzed or they might just start waking up on their own and the machine is just gonna assist them with more tidal volume. And for me, this is the mode that I prefer because it's really simple and if the patient starts breathing on their own, it's just gonna assist them. Then moving on to the last volume control mode of our machine is the SIMV. It stands for Synchronized Intermittent Mandatory Ventilation. The best way I can explain it simply is that the synchronized part is that the ventilator tries to synchronize with the patient's spontaneous breath and it give a minimum full mandatory breath uh, each minute and in between it's going to assist the patient a bit. So in between, between, in between the full tidal volume, if the patient starts breathing spontaneously, the machine will insufflate just a small amount of pressure to assist the patient so the patient doesn't get tired. This is a good mode for uh, non-paralyzed patients or patients that are not too much sedated and that can breathe on their own. And this is a mode that, that makes a lot of sense for the ICU. And here's the graph. Uh, as you can see, the first big wave would be a full tidal volume that the machine would deliver. And then the small waves after this is that the patient is breathing on its own. And then instead of giving a full tidal volume, like the S IPPV, it's just gonna insufflate a small pressure just to assist the patient so it doesn't get tired. And then after a while, you can see the patient, there's a small negative pressure, the patient takes a breath, and then it's gonna insufflate a full tidal volume. Just to summarize, there are three volume control modes on our machine, IPPV, SIPPV, and SIMV. People might not agree with me, but I prefer SIPPV because it's gonna give a, a tidal volume at a set rate that we uh, decided. And if the patients start breathing on their own, they're gonna have a tidal volume just to, um, to supplement them. Um, because most of our patients that we're gonna intubate in the ED are either gonna be heavily intoxicated or sedated, they're gonna be rusk or they're gonna be paralyzed and the paralytics are gonna wear off. So at some point they might start breathing on their own and it's gonna assist them a bit. So now let's talk about the settings. In terms of settings, we are lucky because we have some guidance from the ARDS net study that basically they show that using a lower tidal volume, um, having a respiratory rate uh, that matches the patient's need and by being aggressive and quickly decreasing the FiO2 and following a FiO2 to a PEEP chart, um, what, we, what we call a long protective strategy, this has been shown to decrease mortality in ARDS uh, patient. And this is also something we're gonna use for patients who are at risk of developing an ARDS, um, which I think applies to most of our patients in the ED. Now let's break it down. The first big part is the tidal volume. So what we recommend is to use six to eight cc per kilo of ideal body weight. So that means you have to measure the patient's height and then there's a long formula that you should not remember but you can go to uh, medcalc and you can enter the patient's height and it's going to give you their uh, ideal body weight the rationale is that you don't want to use too large tidal volume because uh, you don't want to over inflate the alveoli because this can lead to inflammation and damage and also cause some volume trauma and this is bad for the patient in terms of the respiratory rate um, now you have to match the patient respiratory rate to its need and we usually recommend putting it between 15 to 18 and keep in mind that our default machine uh, when you just turn it, turn it on and then you select adult the rest rate is 12 so you will want to adjust it you want to increase it to somewhere between 15 and 18 and then you can also adjust it to more specific a situation like the patient who has obstruction uh, like asthma or COPD you would want to maybe decrease the rate just to let more like time for um, exhalation and or if the patient is breathing uh, like crazy like trying to compensate for some metabolic acidosis DKA uh, you would want to increase the rate but for now let's just aim for a respiratory rate between 15 and 18. Now the FiO2 FiO2 stands for fraction of inspired oxygen and basically this is just the fraction of oxygen that we want to give to the patient. And oxygen is good and bad. 
too little oxygen is bad, obviously, but too much oxygen is also bad because it can lead to free radicals and inflammation that would make things worse uh, for the patient down the road. And this is something we, that people have been more and more aware of it uh, lately. It's okay to put the patient on 100% oxygen initially. Uh, you know, let's say it was apneic for, for a few minutes and then you'll just leave him on 102 for uh, five minutes, but you should start titrating it down um, after uh, I would say five minutes and then they recommend that to decrease the FiO2 by about 10% every 10 minutes and keep in mind that what's our goal our goal is not to achieve a 100% saturation in these intubated patients but for LT adults it's to aim between 92 95 and for patients with COPD or lung disease uh, you should aim towards 88 to 92 percent just to finish on the FiO2 um, one thing that the ARDS uh, recommended is to use an FiO2 to a uh, PEEP chart. Um, the idea is that if the patient fails to have to reach a proper saturation, instead of like cranking the FiO2 like there's no tomorrow, uh, people have been thinking that, wait a minute, maybe the saturation is not great because there's a bunch of alveoli that are now collapses and not recruited and they don't participate in the uh, oxygenation process. So by having a PEEP, you can recruit these collapsed alveoli. So again, the idea behind is that as you increase the FiO2, you should also increase the PEEP to recruit these alveoli. And that's the chart that they use in the ARDS study. And then it's easy and it's been validated. We have printed the ARDS net protocol and it's right next to the machine where you can use it. So one other important setting is to aim for a plateau pressure of less than 30 centimeters of water because you don't want too high pressures in the alveoli. The best way I can explain it is that you have the peak pressure and the plateau pressure. And the peak pressure or the pressure max on the ventilator, this represents the pressure in all of the ventilator equipment, the tubes, the large airway and the alveoli. This is the peak pressure. But to isolate the pressure of the alveoli only, this is the plateau pressure. So this is a graph of what happens when there's a tidal volume. So you see that the, some air is getting pushed in and then the pressure increase. It goes all the way up to the peak pressure, okay? Like I said, this is the pressure of the vent, the tubes, the large airway, and the alveoli. But when you do an inspiratory hold, like you see here, the blue line, then this is when you're gonna isolate only the pressure inside of the alveoli. So some machine have a button that you can just push on and it's gonna make an inspiratory hold. But in our machine, you have to be a bit more like a, like a ninja. Uh, there's a bit more kind of like wiggling to do to know it, but I'll make a movie later and then you will understand how to adjust it and how to see the plateau pressure. So just to summarize the settings, we wanna adopt a long protective strategy uh, using the ARDS net. These settings for us, I would say that that's what we're gonna use for 90% plus of our patients. And remember that you wanna have a lower tidal volume, you wanna respirate that matches the need of the patient, a plateau pressure that is less than 30 centimeters of water, and you wanna follow the PEEP to FiO2 chart. So just to summarize, I want you to tame the beast. I want you to know you're a machine and how to use it. I also want you to focus on the volume control and you should also use the ARDS net chart that we've printed and it's right next to the machine. And if you're unsure, please ask for help. And I'm really sorry to say that this is not finished yet. This talk was just the starting point of the board game. I've put some uh, links for additional movies and articles and I really insist that you go and watch them and read, that, read them so you can become a real master of our ventilator. So I hope you learned something today and I'm really looking forward to see more patients connected on the ventilator. This was Eric and I'm saying bless bless.